Today I'm going to talk to you about how what you eat in your diet, particularly micronutrients, how things like exercise and even something called hyperthermic conditioning can change the expression of your genes. And so what does gene expression mean? So we can actually me measure the expression of thousands of different genes at once through something called gene microwave profiling. And genes that are expressed, they're active. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Um, and those are typically indicated in red. And genes that are not expressed, they're not active. And so they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Even though the gene is there, it's almost as if it wasn't there. And what's really interesting about these changes in gene expression is that they're regulated by what we eat, by how much we eat, by what we don't, don't eat, by uh, how much exercise we get, how stressed we are, how much sleep, what time of day it is, I can go on and on. Um, and I'll get into this epigenetic part in a little bit, but I wanna highlight the importance of a particular micronutrient called vitamin D, which is actually a fat-soluble vitamin that it gets converted into a steroid hormone that regulates the expression of over 900 genes in the human body. So that's, to give you some perspective, about 1 of the human genome regulated by this steroid hormone, vitamin D steroid hormone. And vitamin D can turn on and turn off expression of, of genes. So uh, I recently published a paper a couple of months ago uh, in FASIP journal where I found a mechanism by which vitamin D uh, turns on the expression of this gene that makes an enzyme called tryptophan hydroxylase. Tryptophan hydroxylase is the rate-limiting enzyme that converts tryptophan into serotonin. And serotonin regulates a wide variety of behaviors, uh, emotional behavior, aggression, anxiety. Um, it regulates cognitive function, learning, and memory. So the fact that vitamin D is important to make this enzyme and this enzyme makes serotonin in your brain, shows you that vitamin D is regulating some brain functions that also impact your behavior. So not only does vitamin D regulate your brain, but it also regulates the aging process. So telomeres are tiny caps at the end of your chromosome. So every cell in your body has 46 chromosomes, and your DNA is wound up inside these chromosomes. And telomeres are these little like orange caps at the end of these chromosomes that protect your DNA from oxidative damage from inflammation, from these things that can damage your DNA and cause um, mutations that are irreversible. Uh, so you can kind of think of telomeres like the, end, like the tips of shoelaces, so they protect your shoelaces from fraying. And what's really interesting is that telomere length is actually a biomarker for aging. So the younger you are, the longer your telomeres are. And as you age, uh, your telomeres get shorter. And that's because we lose about 21 structural units off of our, our telomeres every year. So every time the cells in your body, whether they're liver cells or pancreatic cells or immune cells, whatever cell type it is, it's, it's, as it's proliferating and dividing, it starts to lose telomeres every year until they're shorter and shorter and shorter. And eventually, there's no telomeres left. So what happens at that point is your cell goes into a crisis and it decides to die or go into a permanent state of arrest. And at this point, your cell isn't functioning anymore. So literally, as your telomeres get shorter, your life gets shorter. It's a biomarker for aging. And we know it's involved in the aging process. Some, some diseases that have um, aberrancies or abnormalities in maintaining their telomere length, such as Werner syndrome, um, is an accelerated, uh, they age at an accelerated rate. So if you look here, a woman at 15 years looks about normal, and then at 48 years, she looks like she's about 98. So uh, telomere length does play a role in how we age. So this brings me back to vitamin D. Um, a few studies have looked at the role of vitamin D in, in telomere length, and one particular study that I like is one that was done on 2,100 different uh, twin pairs. And these, they measured the vitamin D levels in these twins, and what they found was that those twins with the highest levels of vitamin D, serum levels of vitamin D, had the longest telomere length. And those with the shortest had the shortest telomere length. And what they found was that the difference in that telomere length corresponded to five years of aging. So those twins with shorter telomeres, even though chronologically they were the same age as their sibling, their cells, their, their, the cells in their body looked like they were five years older, which really uh, highlights the, the importance of this difference between your chronological age in years and your biological age. So the way you treat your body, you know, how, what you're eating, 
and how much you exercise and th things like this impact your biological age. So you can actually have someone who is chronologically older but biologically younger because they're getting the right micronutrients, they're doing the right things, you know, exercising and doing things like paleo where they're lowering, lowering information, not eating a lot of sugar and things like that. So um, the mechanism by which vitamin D regulates telomere length brings me back to the gene expression. So vitamin D increases the expression of genes that are involved in repairing damaged DNA. They're DNA repair enzymes. Um, so it lowers DNA damage, um, which is one thing that can um, make your telomeres get shorter. The other way is that uh, vitamin D uh, increases the expression of anti-inflammatory genes and it decreases the expression of pro-inflammatory genes. So vitamin D is lowering inflammation. Inflammation also can accelerate telomere shortening. So these are the two mechanisms by how vitamin D can change gene expression and that can regulate the way you age.